and, and stuff just went from bad to worse for the Baltimore Ravens. You know what? And, and a lot of y'all may disagree with this, but this is how I'm feeling right now. For me, this honestly hurts worse than losing to the Chiefs. It, it really does. And I know it's a much different situation in the, the Chiefs. That was obviously such a huge game. But I think it's the way that we lost to the Chiefs, too, since we were losing, like, for so long. And the Ravens were in it, but never really in it, in it. And they weren't being themselves. But this this hurts me more than the loss to the Chiefs did. Because you had a guy, man. You, 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 you had a guy that was special. You had a guy that was proven. You had a guy that showed you, literally showed you, showed you so much growth from his first year to his second year. He showed you so much consistency from his first year to his second year. He showed you multiple times like, hey, I can make some stuff happen. He had been with the Ravens previously, but then he went over to Michigan, made stuff happen over there. Boom, like that instantly, right away, quick, fast and in a hurry. Had a huge impact on them. Then Ravens are like, you know what? Hey, Mike McDonald, come back. Come on back. Come, come to the NFL. Come be our defensive coordinator. How, how about it? Come, come, come try it out for a little bit. See how you like it. And he not only got the job done with the Baltimore Ravens, but he excelled with the Baltimore Ravens. And he was just amazing. Like, he was somebody, no matter what, about 9.9 .9 times out of 10, he was going to be on point. About 9.9 .9 times out of 10, he was going to not only do his job, but do a phenomenal job at his job. Now that's gone. Now that's done. Now, and, and, and congratulations to Mike McDonald, first and foremost. Well, I guess it's kind of like second. But first and foremost, congrats to Mike McDonald. We're happy for him. We, we're definitely happy for him because he earned it. He earned his job. And just reading the report, let, 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 listen to the, what the report says. From Ian Rappaport, he says, sources, the Seahawks are set to hire Ravens defensive coordinator Mike McDonald as their new head coach. Seattle was willing to wait for him if Baltimore made the Super Bowl. So you see, Seattle knew. They knew. Yeah, they had interviews with Aaron Glenn. Yeah, they had interviews with Ben Johnson. Yeah, they had interviews with uh, Dan Quinn. They had interviews with other people. But that is significant. The Seahawks were willing to wait for him if Baltimore made the Super Bowl. So they were willing to put the, the hiring process on pause just for Mike McDonald because they knew. They knew how special he was. And continuing with the report, it says, instead, their season ended last week, of course, uh, and t he takes a big-time job. He's currently in Seattle on his second interview. And it says the Seahawks brought McDonald in with the goal of hiring him, the top target, all alone for a deal to expect it to be finalized. So that's that, man. That's that. Um, and we got a lot to talk about right now. So sit down, relax. It may be a little while. But before we do that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on. And even though we hate this news, we don't like this news at all. Like it for Mike McDonald personally, but coming from the Ravens fans perspective, Oh, we don't like it. But you can still leave a like on the video. Leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel a whole lot. And somebody that helped out the Ravens a whole lot was Mike McDonald. But now he's gone. Something that we talked about with Mike McDonald in his just short tenor with the Baltimore Ravens. He had a huge impact. His short tenor as defensive coordinator with the Baltimore Ravens. He had a huge impact with the Baltimore Ravens. And... We saw growth, we saw accountability, we saw development, personal development, we saw him develop uh, players, we, we, we just saw so much from him in such a short time, but again, it was a tremendous impact that he had on the Ravens, but again, the thing we saw from him was consistency, and he proved himself. We, we, we know what to expect from Mike McDonald. He, he gave us every single reason to believe in him every single reason to believe in him in literally any single situation because when the situations were the hardest when the situations were the toughest what did mike mcdonald do he showed who he is he stepped up he showed out in the toughest of the tough games well minus the rams game <laughs> besides that one in the toughest of the tough games baltimore ravens they played again and we'll go backwards 
the Chiefs, AFC Championship. Biggest game of the season, obviously, because this is a game to go to the Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes and them Chiefs, they get 14 points on you quick. On your defense, on your number one defense, quick. It's like, whoa. Had a lot of people freaking out. A lot of people like, oh, my goodness, what's going to happen next? Are we going to get blown out? Mike McDonald said, no, 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 watch this. I got you. Three points for the rest of the game. To Patrick Mahomes. Travis Kelly, right? Isaiah Pacheco. 17 points the whole game? No points in the second half? At all? Like, really? How? No, that ain't possible. Yes, it is. With Mike McDonald, it's possible. It certainly was. The game before that, and we talked about it earlier today, just how do you hold a team to not, not even pass? They can't even get past the 25-yard line. That's impossible, especially in these days with all the rules and all that, how everything favors. How do you do that? Then uh, week 18, that was just a whatever game. But previously before that, the games before the Dolphins, two in that Dolphins offense with all that speed, even without Waddle, with all that speed, oh, my goodness. And they were running all over the Ravens. I think I think they're running back, um, not Raheem Mostert, but uh, a chain, Devin a chain. I think he had over 100 yards that game. Dolphins scored, what, 15 points or 19 points, something like that, something crazy low. But their first two drives, they went right down the field, boom, like that. What happened after that? Nothing. 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 Because Mike McDonald, again, in the biggest games. Against the, and then the previous week before that, against the 49ers. <laughs> you know what happened there. He, he made those two MVP candidates look like nothing. Brock Purdy, what, five picks, right? Five interceptions. Now, I know, obviously, it, it, it's about the Jimmys and Joes more than X's and O's, but Mike McDonald put those Jimmys and Joes in the proper places to have success. And he would do that every week. Just about every week. That's why this hurts bad. And another reason this hurts bad, we talked about people being proven. We talked about him being proven. We talked about knowing what to expect from him. Now, once again, the focus is on John Harbaugh. And a lot of focus is on John Harbaugh. Reason being, and we're going to talk about this more later on throughout the weekend and really in the coming months too. But the focus is on John Harbaugh because it's like, hold up, John Harbaugh. You've, you've proven to us who you are in the toughest of the tough moments. Last week against the Texans, I, I was thinking, oh, okay, hey, Ravens done turned the corner. They got it now. Yes, we ain't having none of them. Remember 2019? We, 2019, the Baltimore Ravens were a historically, historically great franchise when it came to the running game. They were historic. They, made, they broke so many records in the running game. And what did that do? That made it easier in the passing game. Lamar Jackson would have like, he would, this dude would have like 13 pass attempts with like four or five touchdowns in a lot of games. Why? Because they were running so well, that made life easy. Everybody was like, oh man, we got to stop them from running. Then they, oh, oh, they threw the ball over the top of our heads. Oh, Lamar Jackson threw another touchdown. Oh, there he goes again. He threw another touchdown. And they would do that like almost every single game. But then what happened in the playoffs? This historically great rushing team in the playoff, they decide, hey, you know what? Mark Ingram, he's hurt. We're going to run our running back six times. Six times. <laughs> Joke. Joke. In the biggest stage of them all, you run your running back six times. So then what happened next? 2020, Baltimore Ravens, they made the playoffs. And they won that playoff game against the Titans. So I was like, okay, let's go. And then against the Bills, they were losing and Lamar got hurt. So I was like, oh, okay, we can't say nothing about that. He got hurt. So then they didn't make the well, they made, they didn't make the playoffs in 2021. They had it. And then Lamar got hurt. Had a number one seed in the AFC North or number one seed in the AFC. Then Lamar got hurt. Everything fell apart. In 2022, same thing. Had number one seed at one point in the AFC, number one seed in the AFC North, all that good stuff. Lamar in the MVP race, he got hurt. But the Ravens still, because of everything that they had already done, they had ended up making the playoffs. But, of course, you know how that went, the whole Tyler Huntley fumble at the one. Da -da -da -da. Hey, they fought hard, though. But then this year, this year it's like, all right, Lamar's healthy. Oh, this year's going to be different. Oh, Baltimore Ravens were steamrolling teams. They were doing their thing. It's like, oh, yeah, this is not a fluke. This team is not fluky at all. They are the real deal. Get to the playoffs. Take care of business in a major way against the Texans. Again, that's what had a lot of us fooled. It sure had me. I'm like, oh, oh, Ravens got it. I saw the, the adjustments from Todd Munkin. I see the adjustments from Mike McDonald. I'm like, Harbaugh got these boys right. Let's go, John. Come on, baby. 
And we've been giving him his credit all year for sure because he's deserved it for sure because he has had this team right. You don't win 13 games by a fluke. Uh-uh, you don't do that, especially the way they've been taking care of some of these teams. But then the AFC Championship game rolled around against John Harbaugh's, his, the guy he used to work under, Andy Reid. And everything went out the window again. 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 Same exact scenario as 2019. Everything's right there in front of you. You know what you got to do. And what made the game worse? What made the game worse? It's like, all right, Chiefs got one of the worst run defenses in the league. One of the worst. So a lot of us, we having conversations leading up to the game. We doing our game previews and all that. We talking about it. Oh, Ravens about to run wild on these Chiefs. Let's go. I can't wait. This game might even be a blowout, but it's still Patrick Mahomes and them. So got to respect them because they done been here, done that. But Ra oh, Ravens, oh, they could take off. Run all over them. Chiefs, Chiefs can't stop the run. The Bills just showed you the week before. That the Chiefs, they, they ain't stopping nobody from running. Good. Oh, yeah, we about to have a field day on these boys. Let's go. Nope. Raven said, we are going to run with our running backs six times. Six. Now, I know a lot of the blame has been going to Todd Monk. And a lot of people have been like, Monkey, what kind of game was that? What kind of game did you call? And that is true. What kind of game did he call? Then a lot of the blame goes to Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson, what were you doing? Why were you not taking what's right in front of you? Why were you, you weren't taking what's given to you? You weren't making it easy. You weren't taking off when you could have taken off. You, you had so many opportunities. And that, he gets some of the blame too, for sure. For sure. You can talk about the offensive line. Man, the offensive line, they wasn't blocking like that. What is going on with the offensive line? Why y'all not blocking for Lamar? That's our MVP quarterback. You got to protect them. They get some blame too. But the common denominator common denominator because this is literally the had the Ravens lost that game and they put their best foot forward because that's what I always say I, I, I always wanted to be to where everything should fall on the players all the blame should fall on the players it should not fall on the coaches that's how I, I, I think it should be if the if the rate that that's the best type of I know there's not a good type of loss but if a team fails for something, I think that the coaches should put all the players in a position to have success. But then and if the players don't execute right, then it should all be on them. But I can't say that in this case. I couldn't say that in 2019 either. And these were literally the exact same things that happened. Baltimore Ravens, historically great running team this year too. Historically great running team, historically great defense. And they decided, you know what? We're going to go directly against Everything that works. They did it in 2019. In 2019, Todd Monkey was nowhere to be found. I mean, he was with Cleveland. He was not with the Baltimore Ravens. He was the offensive coordinator. Greg Roman was. And everybody, was, all of us are so angry at Greg Roman. Greg Roman this, Greg Roman that. Man, Greg Roman, why'd you do that? What's wrong with you, Greg Roman? What, what, what kind of game plan is that? Then this year, if I, Todd Monkey, what kind of game plan was that? What are you doing? What's going on? Who oversees those guys who's in charge of those guys who can step in with those guys and not just with the coordinator with the players too it was like a coach so many times last year we we, we talked about especially when um b before they even let greg roman go we said this both before and after they let greg roman go both times, or both scenarios, we said that the issue is much deeper than just Greg Roman. It's much deeper than Greg Roman. Much deeper. Because we talked about how the Baltimore Ravens, they've been through so many different offensive coordinators, so many different ones, and it's been the same issue. Same issue. And it's like now the Baltimore Ravens, it's like they, they graduated to a new level of the same issue. Because before, the issue would be the offense in the regular season. We like, man, the offense and the regular season, they just can't get it done. They can't score. They ain't getting no yards. They ain't getting no points. What's going on? So we went through offensive coordinator after offensive coordinator, offensive coordinator. So then with Greg Roman, it was like, oh, yeah, oh, during the regular season, oh, they, they putting up points. They putting up points. Even in games that they struggled, they putting up points. It's like, oh, okay, let's go. But then they got to postseason. It'd be like, oh, what's happening? So then go from Greg Roman, top monkey. Regular season, oh, yeah, doing that thing. Even in games where they're not all the way on point, they putting up points, putting up points, putting up points, putting up points. And then boom, postseason. 
uh, first half they ain't put on they put up ten, but then the second half they took off. It's like okay, yeah, let's go. But then in that Chiefs game, it's like oof, same issues. John Harbaugh, we looking at you, my friend. We looking at you, my friend. We talked about it throughout the season how um because a lot of people they knew we knew that Mike McDonald was out of here. We knew one that he was going to be out of here, and I said the only way that Mike McDonald was 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 gonna stay, the only way that I felt like he could stay that he would stay, would be if the Baltimore Ravens won a Super Bowl and John Harbaugh decided to move to a front office role and Mike McDonald got promoted to head coach. That was the only way I saw him staying. That was it. Mm, that obviously ain't happened. The Ravens sure ain't winning the Super Bowl. Um, and now, yeah, we're here. Mike McDonald is gone. He's gone. Um, I, and I know we got some guys in the building who they could promote. They could promote Zach Zachary Orr, who used to play for the Baltimore Ravens, used to be a nice inside linebacker for the Ravens, but then he had that unfortunate neck injury. Uh, so he could be a defensive coordinator. You got Anthony Weaver, who was a defensive line coach. He used to also play for the Baltimore Ravens, was a defensive lineman for the Baltimore Ravens. You could promote him to defensive coordinator. And I'm sure both of those guys could do a phenomenal job. But the thing where Ravens fans will be hesitant now and how what they've been hesitant about before will still be the head coach. It will still be the ultimate leader on the team, John Harbaugh. And I can't fault any Ravens fans for being hesitant and fully believing in what the Ravens can accomplish because they have the same head coach, because he's been the common denominator in so many of the Baltimore Ravens, different things. Now, there have been other factors for sure. There have been other factors for sure. There have been times where Lamar might have a bad game. There might have been times where the tackling is bad. There might be times with this, that, and the third. But there is one common denominator and that is John Harbaugh. So with Mike McDonald leaving, it's, we'll see what happens. I'm sure that they're, they're going to hire somebody and they're going to do a good job as defensive coordinator. Will they do as good as Mike McDonald? We'll see. We got to hope so. Of course we hope so. Of course we hope so. We, we, we don't want to see the Baltimore Ravens fail, but I know many Ravens fans are scared that the Baltimore Ravens will continue to fail if they keep doing the same things over and over and over. If in the biggest moments, in the biggest stages, they continue to do this malpractice and they continue to fail at this just ultimate level, then that won't be a good thing. Team keep it clean. I, I, we'll see. We'll see how this whole thing works itself out. Uh, that just made the press conference on Friday that much more interesting. 